What I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is a defense for the desecration of the Quran. That's what I'm going to talk about. A defense of the desecration of the Quran. Now, I want to be clear. Just because something is permissible does not mean that it is obligatory. I myself will not desecrate a Quran. I am not arguing that you should desecrate a Quran. But I am arguing that given certain circumstances and in certain, for certain reasons, it is permissible to desecrate a Quran. 2 Kings 18.20. So, 18 verse 20. Bear with us one second. So, in the book of Kings, 2 Kings, chapters 18 to 20, Hezekiah, who is one of the kings of Israel, is commanded by God to destroy, it's actually not the verse, um, to destroy the pagan idols of the Philistines, to uphold the worship of the one true God. So Hezekiah, a king of Israel, destroys the pagan isles. In uh, 2 Kings 23 to 25, King Josiah destroys the pagan idols. And Paul, can you turn to 19, 11 to 20? Paul, having converted people to the faith, destroys their religious texts. There's no denying from any honest reading of scripture that the destruction of idols is something that is permissible within the Christian faith. Found it? So Paul 19, 11 to 20. So Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the lands, destroying them completely, so will you be spared. Did the gods of those nations which my fathers destroyed deliver them? Even Gozon and Haran and Rezeph and the sons of Eden, who were the Telassar, where is the kings of Hamath? the king of Arpad, the king of the city of Seravaim, and of Hena, and of Eva. Then Hezekiah took the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. He went up to the house of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel, who are enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made the heaven and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to the words of Sekenarim, which he has sent to reproach the living God. So Hezekiah and the forefathers of Israel destroyed the pagan idols. Sorry, Acts 19, 11 to 20. Hezekiah and his ancestors destroyed the pagan idols. Josiah destroyed the pagan idols. Christian saints down through history have been celebrated for destroying pagan idols. Saint Florus and Saint Lazarus destroyed pagan idols. Saint Abbasius of Heropolis destroyed pagan idols. Saint Specipius, Elisipius, and Melisipius destroyed pagan idols. Saint and King Edwin of Northumbria of England destroyed pagan idols. Saint Boniface destroyed pagan idols. 
Saint and Prince Vladimir destroyed pagan idols and Saint Benedict of Monte Cassino also destroyed pagan idols. In the story of Ephesus, in the book of Acts, we read, God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out. Also, some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name over those who had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. The evil spirits answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus, I know about Paul, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leapt on them and subdued all of them and empowered them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known to all, both Jews and Greeks, who lived in Ephesus, and fear fell upon them in all the name of the Lord. Jesus was being magnified. Many also of those who had believed kept coming, confessing and disclosing their practices. And many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of everyone and they counted up the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Thank you, bro. So let us be clear. The Bible is clear that the destruction of pagan idols is permissible. Even expensive pieces of literature can be destroyed. So when you see Christians burning the Harry Potter books, they are not doing anything that is not permissible according to the Christian faith and according to which celebrated saints have done before. Now, we Christians are not the only ones destroying or who have destroyed religious art. In France right now, liberal progressives, militants and Islamist refugees have been responsible for the burning of churches. There have been attacks on churches by Muslim migrants across Italy. There have been attacks on churches by the BLM across America, vandalizing and desecrating Christian religious art. There have been acts of sacrilege committed by British artists in the United Kingdom. These include putting a Bible in a museum and inviting people to graffiti on the Bible. These include sticking a crucifix in a vat of piss and calling it art. These include writing a play called the Jerry Springer Opera and broadcasting it on the BBC being paid for by the British licensee payer. So let us be clear, we Christians do not need to receive any lecture about the desecration of religious artifacts by liberal progressives that freely blaspheme the Christian faith. To create religious artifacts of the Christian faith. But yet today and this week, going on trial are con co-conspirators of the terrorists that carried out the attacks on Charlie Hebdo magazine because it portrayed Mohammed in a less than flattering light. And the BBC would not broadcast those pictures because the BBC said that it would hurt 
the feelings of Muslims? Do you think, BBC, that your Jerry Springer opera would not hurt the feelings of Christians? No! Muslims object to burning the Quran. Some right-wing activists recently burnt copies of the Quran in Sweden and Muslims have rioted in the street because of that. Those Muslims seem ignorant of the fact that Muslims themselves have burnt the Quran. The Caliph Uthman burnt copies of the Quran to suppress textual variants of his own holy book. And yet Muslims complain if anyone else burns their Quran. However, bear it, certainly sir, once I've finished I'll take questions. However, if Muslims object to desecrations of the Quran, like burning the Quran, even though their caliphs burnt the Quran, then we should expect that Muhammad would treat religious artifacts belonging to other religions with respect. Because after all, why would Muslims complain about something that their prophet does? So does their prophet teach other, other people's religious artifacts with respect? Every Muslim knows who knows the life of Muhammad that after reconquering Mecca, Muhammad had the 360 idols of Mecca destroyed. Do you think that all the pagans in Mecca had abandoned their religion? No. There were still pagans in Mecca. And he desecrated their religious artifacts. Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, 969, Muhammad is reported as saying this, shall I not send you with some instructions as the messenger of Allah sent me? Sorry, this is one of the companions of the Prophet. Shall I not send you with the same instructions as the messenger of Allah sent me? So let us ask, what were those instructions that the Messenger of Allah sent to the man? Do not leave any image without defacing it. That's what Muhammad said. Deface the images of the unbeliever. So why then do Muslims complain if we desecrate the Quran when they are following a religion that instructs them to desecrate the religious art of other people. Defacing it, or any built up grave without leveling it. You can find this hadith on islamka.info. That's a Muslim source. Muhammad also says in Muslim 832, I was sent to uphold the ties of kinship, listen to the next bit, to break the idols. And so Allah will be worshipped alone and no partner or associate. That's Sahih Muslim 832. So Muslims follow a religion in which their prophet instructs them to desecrate the religious art of other people and yet they complain if people desecrate their Quran. We saw Muslims put this in practice in Petra, where Muslims destroyed the religious iconography of the Persian people. We saw Muslims put this into practice in Afghanistan, where they blew up huge Buddhas that belonged to the Buddhists. We saw that they desecrated the graves of Sufi Muslims in Timbuktu. 
we saw that when they entered into the church of Hagia Sophia, when Hezbollah, the very group that the Tower team say are freedom fighters, when Islamist terrorists went into the Hagia Sophia, they shot rifles at the icons of the Christians. Sahih al-Bukhari 3020 and Sahih Muslim 247 6 state this. They put these words into Muhammad's mouth. O oh, Jaria, will you not relieve me of Dul al Kalsa? Dul al Kalsa was a place of worship that was used by non Muslims. And Muhammad is saying, O oh, Jaria, will you not relieve me of Dul al Kalsa? That was the house in Yemen belonging to the tribe of Kath Am, which was called Kabat and Yamaniya. I set out with 150 horsemen. And so Jaria went and burned it with fire. And he said, a messenger he sent back to the prophet said, I did not come to you until we had left it like a scabby camel. Muhammad commanded the desecration of religious artifacts of others' religions. And for 1400 years, Muslims have desecrated the religious sites of other people. Example, the church of Job in Syria was converted to a mosque despite the fact that there were many Christians who wanted to worship there. The cave of the patriarchs in Israel was turned into a mosque despite the fact Christians were using it as a church. And all of these examples are examples of churches that were turned into mosques despite the fact that Christians wanted to worship there. The Church of St. Nicholas in Albania, the Church of St. Anthony in Padua, Bosnia, the Church of Hagia Sophia, Turkey, the Church of the Holy Apostles, Turkey, the Church of the Pantocrator, Turkey, the Church of St. Sergius and Bacchius, Turkey, the Church of St. Theodosius in Kora Church, Monastery and Staudius in Turkey. The Church of Our Lady in Buddha. The Church of the Parthenon in Athens. The Cathedral of Veria in Greece. The Church of St. John the Baptist in Lebanon. The Grand Mosque of Tangier in Morocco was originally a church. And there were Christians that wanted to worship there when it was turned into a mosque. And it's not just churches that Muslims desecrated. The Hindu temple of Kashi Vishwanath in India. The Guru Gadawalak Kuhi in Pakistan belonged to Hindus and Sikhs and was desecrated and turned into a mosque. And why? Because Muhammad said so. And why? Because Muhammad commanded his followers to do it. And why? Because Muhammad did it himself. But yet, if we Christians desecrate a Quran, can I have that folder? If we Christians desecrate a Quran, we will be arrested for Islamophobia.
So what, pray tell, is this? These are the texts of the Holy Bible written in Aramaic. They were destroyed by Muslims following the example of Muhammad. Why is that not Christophobia? He can wait. <laughs> this is a Bible from Iraq that was shot by Muslim terrorists. Photo evidence of Christophobia. This is another Bible shot by Islamic terrorists because those Muslims were following the example of their prophet. Now, you might say that this is done by extremists in Iraq, but Muslims do this in Pakistan. Muslims do this in Nigeria. Film me, bro, don't feed the troll. Muslims desecrate Christians in Nigeria. These are the remains of a bombed out church in Egypt. Why are Muslims desecrating the religious artifacts of the Christians? Surely, one second, one second. This is the bombed out church. He's not a Christian from Egypt. So, you're not a Christian from Egypt. So, this brother introduced himself as a Christian from Egypt. He just lied. He's not a Christian from Egypt. He's a Muslim from Egypt. So, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, another bomb church in Egypt. Why? Because Muslims are following their prophet. This is another bomb church in Egypt. Look at the blood of the martyrs and honor them. Those Christians died because they worshipped Jesus in a Muslim country and they paid the price with their lives. No, you can wait. No, you can wait. This kind of prejudice is coming from Muhammad's teaching and Muslims are following it when they act upon it. And why can we not call it Christophobia? Another picture, another picture of the same bomb church with the blood of Christians still on the floor. They are following their prophet. Now, let me be clear. Many Muslims are better than Muhammad. They are the ones that disagree with Muhammad's teaching and don't want to desecrate churches and Bibles and icons and pagan idols. They do this because they're better than Muhammad, not because they are following the example of Muhammad. In one anti-Christian pogrom in Egypt, in one week, 40 churches were burned to the ground. 23 other churches were looted and ransacked. Their icons desecrated, thrown to the floor, stamped upon, beaten, broken, smashed. 160 Christian-owned buildings were attacked. Businesses, family homes, community centers, hospitals, schools, charities, churches. Christophobia 
is alive in Egypt because of the teachings of Muhammad. And yet, if we point to these facts, they call us Islamophobe. They are Christophobes who want to silence the truth of the persecuted church. And every Christian, it is your duty to speak about the persecuted church and to call out the liberals for their hypocrisy and to challenge the Muslims. Are you better than Muhammad or not? And most of them will pass the test, I am sure, because most Muslims are better than their prophet. Now, I started this talk by pointing out that Christians have also desecrated the religious iconography of others. So why am I lampooning Muhammad? Why? For this reason. Because Jesus is our example. Jesus is our example and he does not make it obligatory to destroy pagan idols. It is permissible, but it is not obligatory to do so. Which means that a Christian should only desecrate the religious iconography of others if it is the calling of the Holy Spirit to do so as a prophetic act. It doesn't mean that every Christian should. However, Muslims' example is Muhammad. And Muhammad himself desecrated pagan idols and commanded the destruction of other pagan idols. Which means that when a Muslim destroys the religious iconography of others, he is doing what he is commanded to do by Muhammad. No, Christians, and to all you liberal progressives, if you can desecrate a crucifix by calling it art when you stick it in a vat of piss, and you can celebrate as art asking people to graffiti in a Bible as you did in Scotland. Don't lecture us if we burn the Quran. Don't lecture us if we burn, drill holes into the Quran. And Muslims, if you think that you can destroy the Buddhas of Afghanistan, the Zoroastrian art that was in Syria, that you can desecrate our churches in Hagia Sophia, then don't complain if we burn your Quran. If you can kill Christians in Nigeria, don't complain if we burn your Quran. It is not an obligation to burn a Quran. I am not saying that you should burn a Quran, but what I am saying is that it is permissible. What I am saying is that we don't need to receive any lectures about our free expression if that involves drawing pictures of Muhammad that Muslims don't like, like Charlie Hebdo did. If you can desecrate our iconography because your prophet said you could, don't complain if Charlie Hebdo draws a cartoon of Muhammad that you don't like. If you can broadcast the Jerry Springer opera that blasphemes Jesus Christ on BBC Two, despite the fact that half a million Christians asked you not to, don't then not broadcast 
the pictures done by Charlie Hebdo on the BBC, you hypocrites. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't need to take lectures from liberals and we don't need to take lectures from Muslims. Any questions? Let him have his moment. 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 We love Uncle Jamal. 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 And we love you, everybody. Thank you. And do you not love Allah? God bless you, Uncle Jamal. And do not love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Crazy. Thank you. We're all crazy because we're not Muslims. No, let him go. Arax, please let him go. So, guys, any questions on the topic I've talked about? Great. Thank you very much. He's not a liar. Wait, you wanted to say something? No, I just wanted to say that about the, the attacks on churches and stuff. Uh, just around a month ago in Afghanistan, ISIS went into a Sikh temple in Afghanistan and shot dead 25 Sikhs. I was there was worse than me. And that was just a month ago, yeah? So even in Afghanistan, there used to be over 250,000 Sikhs and Hindus. Now there's only 1,000 of each group. What? You mean the BBC didn't cover the massacre of Sikhs in Afghanistan? Ladies and gentlemen, the BBC is lying to you. They are filtering the news because they don't want you to recognize that there is a wider context connected to the kind of terrorist actions we're seeing in Europe. Let me give you that wider context. For 1400 years, without any interruption at all, Muslims have been trying to conquer. 1400 years. That is why they don't tell you about the plight of Eastern Christians under the Ottoman Empire. Because when you hear about a bombing in London with the knowledge of that context, it gives a different ring to it, doesn't it? When you hear about the burning of churches in France by Muslims, it gives a different ring to it, doesn't it? If you recognize that the Barbary pirates and Muslims were attacking Christians for 1400 years, trying to conquer the lands for 1400 years. Don't believe me, think I'm lying. Ask the Greeks, ask the Romanians, ask the Albanians, ask the Italians, ask the Cypriots, ask the Cretes, ask the Nubian Egyptians, the Copts, ask the Assyrians, ask the Lebanese, Ask the Armenians, ask the Georgians, ask the Persians, ask the Spanish, ask the French. History gives its own witness. And we have been spun a lie by our leaders who say that Islamic radicalism is just people misinterpreting their religious texts. That means that if they're misinterpreting their religious texts, they have done so for 1,400 years.
until until Tony Blair yeah. and George W. Bush oh. came to tell them that they misunderstood. <laughs> until David Cameron came to say that they got it wrong. To, to, until Angela Merkel yeah. came to say they misunderstood the example of Muhammad <laughs> in the Hadith <laughs> and what the Quran says. He was just what a joke. Christians, stand up for one another. Stand up for our brothers and sisters. Find your solidarity. Find your balls. Find your courage. Find your backbone. And unite, organize, train, and resist.